Good afternoon, dear participants, uh, and welcome to this webinar. This is Evgenia Generalova speaking. I am the Knowledge Communications Manager for the Child Hub, based with Peredezom's regional office in Budapest. Could you please let me know that you can hear me well by writing something in the chat box? Yes, good, wonderful. I'm very happy it works well. Uh, we are very glad to have you here with us today on this webinar where we are going to present the results of our regional research on mapping social service workforce across Southeast Europe. And before I give the floor to our researcher and presenter Brie Akerson, um, I would like to thank you for taking this poll. And I will give you a very short and brief overview of this platform so as you feel comfortable and you know what to do. So just give me a second. You should now be able to see a slide with the basic features of this platform. So you know the microphones are not enabled. So in case you want to comment or ask a question, please do this in writing in the chat box. Uh, we will have a few more polls, so please pay attention to them. Um, in case you lose the sound, check the microphone, the speaker's icon on the top black bar. It should be always green. And also next to your speaker's icon, you should be able to see an icon of a man with a raised hand on the same bar on the top. So in case uh, you want to ask a question like, like using your microphone, please use that icon to raise your hand and then we will give you the microphone as soon as we are able to do so. And now I will put uh, the presentation for the Brie and we'll give the floor to her. Here it is. Brie, the floor is yours. Thank you. So, uh, can you hear me okay, Evgenia? Great, thank you. Just wanted to check. Um, thanks, everyone, for um, for being here and, and for uh, you know wanting to learn more about this research. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to thank the national researchers who are listed on this slide here. Um, thank them so much. I mean, this, this research was not possible without the field work that they did and all the hard work that they did to gather the data in the different countries. So uh, they're actually all here on the, on the webinar. Um, they're on the participants list. And what I'm hoping to do today is uh, to, for the second half of the webinar, to really engage uh, the researchers in the questions and answers and the discussion of this project. Um, the, the last time we were all together was about a year ago when we were starting the project. So it's a great way to end the project by kind of having this discussion today. Um, let's see here, just trying to make sure the slides work okay. Okay, so just to give a, a bit of a background for the, uh, for the project, uh, there's been a lot of movement uh, towards improving child protection through existing systems. And the idea is to strengthen the systems rather than looking at kind of the micro level child protection concerns or looking to international organizations to provide aid. So social workers are really in a prime position to tackle these issues. Uh, but social workers and social service workers and other professionals in this area, they face many challenges. We don't know uh, what these opportunities and challenges are. We, we kind of have an idea of it, but we haven't done research to really map out what those uh, opportunities and challenges are. And there have been recent regional efforts to map the social service workforce. Um, there's been broad mapping of child protection systems. Uh, there's a report by Maestral International and UNICEF um, that came out in 2010. Uh, also, there was a study that I was involved in with 14 countries in West and Central Africa to map the social service workforce um, in that region. And Global Social Service Workforce Alliance also um, conducted a mapping exercise of 15 countries in three continents. These three documents are actually available on the webpage that, uh, where you signed up for this webinar. So if you want to take a look at those, 
um, they're really great, great resources. So I was commissioned by uh, Terrazome to help uh, with this project to map the social service workforce in Southeast Europe in relation to child protection. And, and that's the project um, that we're presenting to you today. The objectives of uh, the goal of the research was to really provide an overview of the social service workforce um, in this area, like I said, with a focus on those engaged in the child protection system, and to look at the legislative and infrastructural framework, so the laws, the systems in place that support social service work, to also consider the education, training, and professional development opportunities for social service workers, and to explore how these education training opportunities are aligned or misaligned with the realities of social service practice. We define the social service system, um, taking the Global Social Service Workforce Alliance's definition as interventions, programs, and benefits that are provided by governmental, civil society, and community actors to ensure the welfare and protection of socially or economically disadvantaged individuals and families. And our definition of social service workers is also quite broad, because as you all know, you know social service workers uh, encompass a wide range of, uh, of people, of individuals. So it's paid and unpaid work, governmental and non-governmental. Anyone engaged in the social service system, including social workers, social work administrators, social assistants, child protection professionals, frontline workers, paraprofessional workers and others. And we find that in all of these mapping exercises that those who are doing social service work have very different names uh, in different countries and in different regions, but they're all doing social service work. The methodology for the, uh, the project, uh, there were two main phases. The first was a literature review and the uh, national researchers conducted a literature review of curriculum, research documents, policy documents, any kind of practice guidelines. And they developed a preliminary report that included analysis of curriculum, research, policy, and practice. And this gave us a good overview of the, um, the, the country and where what kind of information is available, what kind of system is, um, is present. After the literature review, we all got together in Belgrade for a two-day workshop, and we shared, everybody shared the results, uh, the findings from the literature review across the countries. We also did a training in research methods for data collection. All of the researchers are highly you know, skilled researchers, but we wanted to make sure that the research methods were the same across the countries so that um, we were collecting data in, in a similar manner. And we also worked together to develop a methodological action plan for the next several months in terms of collecting data. Um, the, the researchers collected the data, conducted the analysis, and they developed country-level reports. Um, there was you know, several back and forths between me and, and the researchers in terms of you know, clarification and more information and so forth. And then the report that we're presenting today was the culmination of, of looking at all those reports and kind of looking at the commonalities and, and you know, the interesting things that came out from those, those reports. The methodology that we uh, trained in and that uh, the researchers took to the field and to their countries to, to conduct were semi-structured interviews. So uh, the researchers did a total of almost 150 semi-structured interviews with academics involved in training the social service workforce, managers, practitioners, um, the, the researchers conducted case stories with practitioners, which was a way to learn how education translates to research, I'm sorry, how education translates to practice. And then there were also uh, about 48 focus group discussions and consensus building exercises with educators and practitioners. And these consensus building exercises, um, they looked at the needs, the training needs and the training gaps uh, for the, um, the practitioners. This slide just shows you a bit more about the uh, countries and how many um, participants they uh, recruited and um, interviewed and um, did focus group discussions with. So you'll see it was a good number of people, a total of 451 total participants who um, were interviewed or participated in group discussions in this research.
As all research projects, there are limitations. Um, despite acknowledging the broad scope of individuals involved in social service work, the regional data still tended to overrepresent the experiences of formal paid government social uh, social service workers. Um, you know, those who are who have the title of social worker, for example, those are definitely overrepresented in the data. So there's there's less on paraprofessionals and, and other types of social service workers. The data also tended to favor the experience of individual social service workers engaged in direct practice rather than community-based approaches or a broad overview of the social service system as related to child protection. And finally, with a focus on social service workers, a research project like this did not include perspectives of service users. So for example, children and families who are in direct contact with the child protection system. So in that regard, you know, we're not getting the voices of the actual service users or the beneficiaries. It's really the voices of the, the social workers, social service workers. However, limitations are always uh, areas for opportunity for future research. So these are areas that we would want to emphasize in you know, the next iteration, iteration of this kind of research project. So I'm going to present the findings to you. Um, the findings are divided into three different areas. The first is an overview of the social service workforce. The second is on the education, human resource management, and then skills, knowledge, and interests. And then we'll, we'll end with the recommendations. So um, before we get started on this one, I just wanted to do a quick poll. And I'm just wondering, in your country, what is the general perception of the social service workforce? And Evgenia is going to put the poll up. And if you just want to, what you think, if they're recognized and well-respected, not well-respected, or the general public doesn't really know what social service workers do. All right, so we have a, more than half of the respondents who, uh, half of you voted here. So the majority of you think, or in your country, that people just don't really know what social service workers do. Uh, so over 50% of you said that, and um, social service workers are also not well respected. So, you know, this is an unfortunate you know, finding that we actually, we found throughout the countries. Um, and I'm, I'm sure this isn't going to be surprising uh, for you. Um, so Evgenia, we can go back to the slide. So participants really noted in the, in the research that the general public and beneficiaries have little understanding of the social service workforce. There's an unrecognizability of the role of the profession. And social service workers were viewed largely as government bureaucrats who serve as gatekeepers to financial assistance for vulnerable groups. Although their role in child protection is not really well known to the general public, where they were perceived to be involved in child protection, it's as those uh, who take children away from families. It's not about you know, supporting families, it's about taking children away. So there were several examples of negative perceptions of social service workers, which reflected a public perception that people just don't know what they do. This is a quote from Croatia. People automatically perceive you as a public official who comes to work, drinks coffee for three hours, then goes for a break, and then you do nothing, just wander around. They perceive our field work as our free time. And these perceptions were also um, viewed through the prism of the social security system. From Bosnia, uh, the public believes that social work is a profession that deals exclusively with social benefits and charity. So this perception of social service work as dealing exclusively with economic assistance eclipses uh, their other diverse roles and subsequently their role in child protection may be less known. All the countries had a legal and structural mechanism in place to support social workers and the provision of services, especially in regards to child protection. Areas that are not covered through these mechanisms tend to be filled by NGOs. The research found that in most countries, both the legal frameworks and the institutions and agency structures 
focus on the delivery of social assistance, a mandate that seems to be the prevailing one in the, in the region. The different roles uh, of jobs and duties of social service workers were a bit diverse. This slide shows you just some of the examples of the language that's used to describe a social service worker. Um, they tend to be responsible for and engaged in increasingly complex social service systems. And uh, you can see from these examples, uh, there's not a ton of reference uh, to child protection. So it was, the child protection component was a bit less clear in these countries, which makes identifying relevant training needs as well as other strategies to strengthen the social service workforce a challenge. I know I'm going fast through this information, but all of this information will be available in the final report, and it goes a lot more in depth. And then if you want to go even more in depth, you can go into the um, individual national uh, reports, which are, are very detailed and really, really interesting. So I want to talk a bit about the education and human resources management. Uh, before we get started with that, I just have another poll. Um, Evgenia, if you could put that poll up about formal education and training. So I'm wondering from you, what formal education and training did you undertake to become a social service worker, if, if you are a social service worker? So I earned a graduate level degree, an undergraduate level degree, um, and those would be in a social work or related field. The third choice is um, a, an undergraduate or graduate degree in a field not related to social work. Um, the fourth choice is that you did not receive a university degree, but you completed a training program. And then the fifth choice is that you didn't uh, complete any university degree or a training program. All right, so it looks like a lot of you actually have um, a graduate level degree in, in a social work or related field. Okay, we can end the poll, Vinny, and we can go on to the slides. So I, I think this is an interesting point just to see where people are coming from. And, and a lot of uh, the people that were interviewed in the research uh, maybe did not have a formal social work degree or, or just completed training. And so there's a lot of diversity in terms of the educational background of the social service workforce in the region. Um, there's also no consistency in the requirements to become a social service worker. The report um, provides examples of the requirements for one to become a formal social service worker. For more formalized jobs, so for example, paid or government social worker, there's typically a university degree required. However, um, there's an example from Romania that showed that in 2013, the agency responsible for child protection activities, um, there was less than 60% of the workers who graduated from university at all. Okay, so there's lots of diversity in terms of the background, educational background of the social service workforce. For formal social service workers, the data indicate that requirements are inconsistent and not uniformly followed. There was little to no data on the requirements for one to become a paraprofessional social worker, and it can be assumed that these requirements vary from organization to organization. In all countries, the initial training of social service workers and those formally engaged in child protection work tended to take place at the university level. Uh, so university level social work was, was common in terms of kind of the formalized uh, role of social, social service workers. This slide shows you the different academic programs. The report details the names of those programs and what degrees they offer. But this just gives you an idea of, of how many um, you know, programs are offering bachelors and masters in social work related areas. Uh, there are a lot of programs. I think this is an impressive strength of the Southeast Europe uh, region. So, for example, in Bulgaria, there's, with, they have 10 universities offering degrees from bachelor's level to master's level. 
only four universities, um, Albania, Bosnia, Croatia, and Serbia had doctoral programs. So this has implications for training the social service workforce in the, in the formal manner. I'm going to skip this one here. I'm just going to go into the organizational environment. Across the countries, the social service workers described facing a challenging work environment with heavy workloads, low remuneration, subpar infrastructure, fragile motivation of workers, all compounded by a lack of political commitment to the profession. This quote from Albania, we work in extremely difficult conditions. I share an office uh, with an economic assistance officer for at least 10 days of the month. I have no room even to stand in my office as it is overwhelmed by people filing for social assistance. I don't have a proper work desk, no computer. I use my personal one and no shelves for files. Luckily, I own a car and the back of my car is turned into my archive. This is not effective and even not professional. When the office is busy, I have no other choice but meeting clients outside in hot and cold days. This looks very unprofessional too. And it's not just the physical infrastructure, but also the professional infrastructure. From Moldova, uh, one participant said, there's chaos for the community social assistant. She has to run around all day, is exhausted, and, ha is, and is tired in the evening, and does not understand what she has done all day, because it's a riot, because everyone calls and requests all day long, everything, I need this or this. So you can see the, the challenges, are, and, and this has effect on um, motivation and on practice and on the implications of um, conducting child protection activities. Across the country, supervision was identified as being an important element of being a social work student as well as being a practicing social service worker. In the Romanian research, um, social service workers identified supervision as a way to decrease stress and increase motivation to develop effective intervention approaches and strategies to manage resources effectively. But supervision was not something that was recognized across countries. In Bulgaria, uh, social service workers reported that the supervision they received was irregular and ineffective. In Albania, participants agreed that the absence of professional supervision was a major gap in their education and professional development. So they acknowledged the importance of supervision in both education and in practice, but the actual reality of that happening um, does not always match up. In Moldova, there was one exception where participants noted that they actually had positive supervisory processes. So this is an example of something maybe we can learn from, from the Moldova example. In terms of motivation, uh, motivation is really linked to working conditions and supervision. And um, it's also um, connected to social service workers' intention to improve and update their skills, which is really important for strengthening the social service workforce. Unfortunately, Social service workers across the countries noted a declining sense of motivation, which negatively impacted their capacity. And this has implications for the application of practice to populations in need, such as children and families. In terms of recruitment and retention policies, some countries have enacted legislation on the number of social service workers necessary to meet the needs of the population. So they have actually numbered this many social workers for this many people, or one social worker for this number of people. However, most countries find that they are grossly under these minimum requirements for a variety of reasons. For example, in Bosnia um, and Herzegovina, uh, it does not meet the federal requirement of one social service worker for every 4,000 people. In Serbia, the social service workforce is aging exhausted and unwilling to integrate new approaches to practice. In Romania, 50% of child protection workers resigned or terminated employment in 2010. So with the challenges facing the social service workforce, it's not surprising that there is a high turnover rate and that countries are struggling to meet the requirements of what they've set out in legislation for how many social service workers there should be per population. And according to the research, there are few creative and effective ideas to retain social service workers. 
I want to turn to the third and final section of, of the report, which is the skills, knowledge, and interest in child protection. And we looked at curriculum, policy, um, research, and practice. So in terms of the curriculum and the theoretical approach, we found that uh, social service work and those ideas uh, related to that is taught and practiced differently within the, the different countries. Nevertheless, there are similarities in some areas of the curricula. So um, some, uh, lots of programs look at social science content, so they draw from sociology, psychology. Um, in terms of child's rights, they look at law and social policy specific to the national social work policies. Um, also drawing from thing, international um, documents such as the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Um, also things like uh, life course studies, so looking at human development, including health, disability, and trauma, which is specific to child protection. So a lot of programs cover these areas, which is really important for child protection um, knowledge and, and system strengthening. But the, the research also found that these curricula have not been updated. And a big problem, and this is not just a problem in Southeast Europe, but this is a problem you know, also in Africa and other, other areas that are um, looking at the social service workforce, is that the curricula still tends to reflect an American or a UK perspective. This quote from Albania, uh, when I signed up two years ago for one of the master's programs, I was hoping to find answers to dilemmas I'd often faced in my practice as a social worker. But I was disappointed to see that not much had changed from my bachelor days. Still examples referring to the US or UK and a lot of repetition of the theoretical frameworks and concepts which are included in every course I've ever attended. So it's replicating uh, knowledge that really might not be relevant to the context. In terms of policy, at the time of their training, uh, social workers tend to learn about current policy that exists at that time. However, less training effort is placed on educating practitioners on how to influence policy and how to keep themselves informed of new policy developments as related to child protection. And there's a low level of social service worker involvement in influencing and shaping policy. From Bulgaria, we are the lowest level of the hierarchy and we don't have an impact over the decisions on higher level because usually the lawmakers are taking models from abroad and not from our country. Efforts to integrate practice into social service worker education through practice-based uh, courses and through practicum experience were also looked at in research. We found that programs face challenges related to ensuring the quality of practice that, that's integrated into the curriculum and also ensuring that education and practice is bridged. This idea of you know, connecting theory, these abstract theories, to actual practice is a big challenge uh, for lots of training programs. From Croatia, uh, a participant said, generally speaking, lectures are dry theory. Where I learn the most is the field practice. So this quote really shows that importance of connecting the classroom theory to practicum practice and actual practice in the field and actual working, actually working with people. From Bulgaria, despite the huge theoretical background, they can't connect the theory with the practice. So this is a comment on you know, students who are graduating and coming into the field. The university is not adjusted to the dynamic of what is happening outside. And again, this is a common criticism, but it's something that we haven't solved yet. In terms of research, we conceptualize research um, as both uh, actually participating in research, things like program evaluations that are really important in terms of learning if programs are working, but also integrating current research uh, relevant research on child protection issues into daily practice. So if a study comes out that's kind of groundbreaking in terms of how to work with families, how are practitioners actually integrating that research into their daily practice? We found that research is a strong component of academic training programs, yet there are variations as to how research is taught in training programs, as well as perceptions about the utility of research in the daily practice of social service workers. From Kosovo, in NGOs, they often participate in the implementation of research projects like program evaluation, and they're, important, they're aware of its importance. In the Centers for Social Work, they express that they are too busy with direct management of cases and have no additional time for research. 
They also felt confident in their case management skills and said that they did not need research to inform their decisions. Others advocated for a limited approach to research where research is seen as being a specialist track within social service work, but not something that everyone who is participating in social service work would get involved in. This quote from um, Serbia, knowledge should not be of all, but is enough that a few people from one institution deal with that. The final section I wanna talk about is the skills, knowledge, and learning. And we asked uh, the participants through consensus building exercises what their priority training needs are. I'm just gonna ask you, um, and Evgenia, if you could put up the poll, what you think are some of the key training gaps among the social service workforce? And you can just answer um, freely um, and we'll, we'll see what the uh, results are for everybody. Okay, so we have a few answers. If you just, um, great. Okay, so it's working. All right, so a lot of these answers are things that we actually saw in the research. Um, communication with children and families, how to talk with children and families, knowledge of child development, trauma, attachment, uh, supervision has come up a lot, attachment-based theory, um, decision-making for, for tough cases. These are great, thank you so much. So um, we'll, we can close that. And I just will move to the next slide here. Because we don't have a lot of time to talk today, and it's a, you know a short webinar, I, I just wanted I put the answers that came from the national research and put it into a a word um, you know a word cloud to kind of see all the different uh, terms that come up. And you can look to the report and find the specific uh, countries and what they identified as being important for train for uh, future training. But you can see here things like um, communication came up, learning about child development. Uh, listening skills, um, research came up as well, counseling strategies, um, supervision came up, working with the community, doing an assessment, uh, learning about decision making in with complicated cases. So lots of different ideas for areas that um, we can focus on for future trainings. I just want to wrap up by talking about the recommendations, and I'm hoping that the recommendations will be a jumping off point for um, our discussion today. So the study um, provided insight into the complex realities facing social service workers in child protection, and it also indicates areas to improve and support the social service workforce. A lot of the national reports came up with recommendations, and I tried to collate all of that into some kind of regional recommendations. And this is shown in this table here. So I divided them up by um, different, the role of different institutions. So the government institutions, academic institutions, professional associations, NGO and civil society. I know there's a lot more, and I know it's a lot more complicated than we can get at in this kind of a table, but um, it shows that the black box shows kind of the primary role, maybe who would be the one to lead um, this recommendation. And then everybody else has a support role and a tertiary role. All of these um, institutions really have to work together in order to change perceptions of social service workers to increase capacity in different ways. So maybe I'll just go through them really quickly and then we can talk about it um, in the discussion. So the first is in terms of government institutions, I think the most important thing would be to develop national frameworks to outline mandatory basic competencies for child protection workers, uh, thereby defining and strengthening the scope of official social service worker activities and also taking into account 
acknowledging, understanding the official responsibilities and duties of the multiple social service workers. So I'm thinking of you know, the different levels, formal social workers, those who are paraprofessionals, those that are doing home care, those that are doing all the different types of social service work in the country has to be acknowledged in a national framework. In terms of uh, academic institutions, um, academic institutions have a great role to play in terms of conducting a review of, of formal education programs. So making sure that they're evaluated, modified, monitored to ensure that curriculum, what we're teaching, those who are coming out of university to work as social service workers, that what they're learning is relevant to the training needs, especially of those who will be engaged in child protection work, and engaging with international standards of what we've you know, been working on in terms of um, education of social service workers. In terms of uh, the third point, which is carrying out further research, uh, academic institutions have a great role to play. They have the capacity to do research and um, looking at the areas that this research, for example, didn't touch upon. So looking at the paraprofessional social service workers, look at community-based approaches, macro-level social service systems, formal informal initiatives, looking at longitudinal data of graduates of programs, of programs and kind of where they're going and what their challenges are would be really great. Um, in terms of professional associations, I think professional associations have a great role to play. Um, this is the International Federation of Social Workers, International Association of Schools of Social Work, the Global Social Service Workforce Alliance. They all have a great role to play in terms of developing um, awareness of what social workers do, um, drawing from international standards, and uh, working to um, advocate for the role of social service workers. And I'd love to hear from you as participants what you think, how that might look, what that might look like. Professional associations also could be responsible, as well as academic institutions, for making research policy and practice accessible. This could be done through simple summaries. Um, the Child Protection Hub is a great resource uh, by which to share relevant research and information. Facilitating exchange among social service workers is another recommendation that professional associations can help with. Um, sharing common research projects, sharing the designing of curricula and learning and, and learning models, um, and also social work practice placement activities. Um, the research in, in Romania suggested staff exchanges where staff go to different organizations and actually learn what's going on um, as a way of professional development. <clears throat> Obviously, the research indicates uh, the importance of working conditions for social service workers. Um, so improving the working conditions is a lot easier said than done. Um, I put that this would be a primary role of the NGO and civil society. This could be um, one of their roles, but also it could be a role of professional associations as well. But uh, it really, the only way to improve working conditions is um, to have advocacy at the government level and the um, professional association levels as well. Supervision is important as well. So supervision and practice was a major gap. So how can we create standards for supervision to ensure that it's done well and done correctly? Um, I suggest in the report that the Child Protection Hub could uh, assist with the improvement of supervision by providing, providing resources about how to conduct supervision. Um, but I think this would also have to come through requirements through professional associations and perhaps the government level as well. And then finally, the research uh, did, you know, look to explore at all the different kinds of relevant and in-depth training opportunities. Things that you mentioned in the previous poll of the areas that are really important for social service workers to know in terms of child protection. Um, in the report, I suggest that training should avoid a narrow focus, um, have to take into account the different levels of experience that social service workers are bringing to the table. Um, they don't have to be in a traditional format. It can be um, experiential learning, working groups, case studies, all different ideas that came about from the research. And these trainings could be accredited by national bodies so, to, so as to contribute to professional development, continuing education requirements. So I just wanted to end, um, I know there's a lot more there and I really uh, request or, or urge you to look at the final report for a lot more details on the national level reports. Um, I just wanted to thank the, um, 
a tear to zone for this project. I, I learned so much and I, I uh, hope that you're going to learn from the report as well. The Global Social Service Workforce Alliance really helped a lot with the research. Um, the CPC Learning Network, um, I had help here at Wilfrid Laurier University where I work. And mostly, and I know I said it before, but I just want to say again, the national researchers who really did an amazing job collecting data and kind of helping me sort through what that, uh, you know, what that looks like and what that means. So thank you. I look forward to a, an interesting discussion and I welcome your questions. Thank you very much, Bri. I can see Stoya Mihailov is raising his hand. Stoyan, I will give you the floor um, in a minute. Make sure your microphone is on. It's on the top black bar and it should be green. Stoyan, I think you can talk now. We cannot hear you yet. Mm, Stoyan, can you make sure your microphone is green? Um, if you look at the top black bar, there is a microphone icon. So if you click on it to make it green, you might need to select the right microphone there. Otherwise, we cannot hear you. Be okay. Yes, great. We can. Right. Uh, Bri, it's a rather technical question. Can we have your presentation because we are going to present our local results in Bulgaria on Monday? So I need to steal some of your slides. Absolutely. I, I'll send this. Uh, I'll send the slides. Um, I can send them to you. No problem. It's in PDF, but we can we can chat about that on on email. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, in case um, any of the national researchers would like to add a comment on or ask a question, please feel free to use either the chat box or you can raise your hand and let me know you would like to have your microphone. And I can see a few people are writing. Okay, and while people take their time, uh, I would like you to answer one more poll and to evaluate the webinar. And also um, to let you know that Child Help is going to have a few fantastic webinars. Um, in the next few weeks. Uh, next week we have the webinar on prevention of sexual exploitation of boys from southeastern from Eastern Europe. And then the week after we have a webinar on online tools for advocacy. So please feel free to sign up for those webinars. I'm sending you the link in the chat box. We will be happy to see you. And I see we have a question. Uh, Bree, um, if you can see the question from Sandrine in the chat, can you please address Okay, so the question is, um, Sandrine, you're asking uh, some promising practice from other regions on strengthening social service workforce. Um, yeah, I mean, there. I mentioned the report, uh, the project we worked on in West and Central Africa, and um, one thing, it was interesting to see the diversity as well within those countries. Some countries were much further ahead in terms of advocating for their social service workforce. So one thing, um, and I'll talk about the experience I remember from, from Nigeria, because I was, I was focusing on Nigeria. Um, but they had uh, really strong professional associations advocating at the government level for a recognition of what the definition of a social uh, worker is in the country. And that was the first step in terms of, uh, that was the first step in terms of defining what are the parameters of what social service workers do. And therefore, that I think uh, is one of the, one of the 
practices that we can learn ab about how to uh, implement some of these recommendations in the report. I think the first step really is to get that recognition at the government level and then work on what does that mean, what does that look like, how can we address um, things like supervision, how can we address working conditions based on that kind of recognition at the national level. But maybe other, the other researchers have other comments or other ideas if this would work in your region, um, I'm not sure. But it really does take the um, commitment of all the different levels in the recommendation. It, it takes the commitment of the government. It takes the commitment of academic institutions who are doing the training. It takes the commitment of the uh, professional associations and the NGOs and the civil society to make this work. Um, so that's a key, key point that I want to make sure I emphasize. Okay, we have uh, one more person raising their hand. Um, Alex, uh, I'm giving you the microphone. And we cannot hear you. Please make sure your microphone icon is green. Otherwise, we cannot hear you. Uh, we still cannot hear you. <laughs> um, if you look at the top, uh, there is a top black bar and there is a microphone icon. If you have two microphones on your computer, you might wish to select different ones to test which one is going to work. But the icon should become green. Click on it. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, excellent. Um, my name is Alexander and I'm coming from Bosnia and thank you very much for such very interesting report. And um, I believe all these um, evidences can be quite beneficial uh, for our countries. I just would like to ask um, whether the researcher um, have tried to cover the question about evidence-based practice in child protection um, here in, in the region. I mean, it's been like a hot, hot topic in the Western countries. So I'm just wondering uh, whether you tried to analyze do social workers somehow um, use evidences um, in their work and uh, would be possible uh, for the region, I mean, for social child, child protection practice to um, implement evidence-based approach in, in, in work. Thank you. Oh, thanks for that question, Alex. Um, we tried to get at that question through our uh, exploration of research and how research is enacted. Um, I think I mentioned research we saw it as two different elements. We saw research as being actually conducting research, doing program evaluations and, and conducting research in terms of child protection issues, um, which is a lot harder for those uh, social workers who are in the field working day to day. I mean, this isn't a priority for them. The other part of research is how social workers, social service workers are using research in their practice. And this gets, it doesn't, we didn't call it evidence-based practice in the report, but it gets at um, that idea of the research that's out there. I mean, there's new research coming out every day on how to work with, how to work, uh, how to do better work with, with children and families, and how is that research getting to the practitioners and, and the, the social service workforce. And I mean, the researchers can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it sounded like it wasn't getting to them, um, that there wasn't a huge amount of uh, connection between the researchers in academia who are doing evidence, who are doing evidence-based research or evidence, who are looking at evidence-based practice and getting that, connecting that to the field. And so it's a big problem, and this is not a new problem. So that is where the recommendation comes in that there has to be a way to connect, um, to make the current research accessible. And there's different models that can be used. I, I talk about it in the report, but the Child Hub is a great uh, platform to share that research. Um, getting research that's evidence-based, uh, for evidence-based practice, synthesized into a, an easy to understand, digestible paragraph, and then sharing it with practitioners through email or, or in other different ways. There's a journal watch model where um, academics get together and discuss the latest research and determine 
what's the most important for the field to know and to learn. And um, it's a way to share culturally relevant research policy and practice. And that is also a different model for how to get evidence-based uh, practice um, going. Um, yeah, I, don't, I didn't see a, a, the term evidence-based practice come up a lot in the research, but I'll, I'll leave it open if any of the researchers want to comment on that. Um, you can either type it in the chat or raise your hand. Okay, thank you very much, Bree, and thank you, Alex. Um, while others are taking their time to think if they have any other questions, I would like also to mention that the recording of this webinar and the summary, short summary, are going to be available on the Charles Hub website on the page where you signed up for the webinar. So you can always download them and share if you wish. And if we don't have any other questions coming. I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. And thank you very much, Bree. It was very interesting, fantastic presentation. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you later at other webinars.